Hello and welcome to another episode of Box Trick. I'm your host, Matt Brady. Joining me, as always, is Thomas the Motas. Someday you'll have to explain that nickname, Davis. And Alan, no nickname, Thomas. Our- I don't know if I can ever explain that nickname. <laughs> yeah, well... Okay, then people will just have to be okay with it. That's just your nickname. Well, no, I just don't think there's an explanation behind it. I know. I think it just grew over time. <laughs> Pretty much. All right, and today's topic is disappointing Xbox 360 games. Uh, we might have one or two games that was just from that generation because I think most of us, I think all three of us pretty much had 360s during that generation, but most of these will be Xbox exclusives. Also, uh, it is currently storming where I'm recording. So if you hear these loud, thunderous booms in the background, that is uh, what that is. And if we experience a technical difficulty during this recording, well, we'll just roll with it. But um, first up, Thomas has a great, disappointing game to talk about. I think it was a P- I think it was a 360 launch game. It was indeed. I'm talking about Perfect Dark Zero. So... I think it's safe to say that the Xbox 360 and, and that generation of consoles was not Rare's best generation. Not, not at all. Not by a shot. Well, Perfect Dark kind of began that trend, didn't it? Yeah. So for those who aren't familiar with the Perfect Dark games, uh, Perfect Dark was an amazing first-person shooter on the uh, Nintendo 64 mm-hmm. where it was kind of built into this cool like cyber future conspiracy theory secret agency all sorts of cool stuff fighting aliens and right had a lot of really unique weapons and a goddamn amazing multiplayer mode Mm -hmm. which was ripped straight from goldeneye well goldeneye was also rare so it was essentially built off i mean perfect dark was supposed to be goldeneye too essentially Yeah. yeah um well they decided to make a prequel game on the 360 and they call it Perfect Dark Zero. You play still as Joanna Dark, the hero of Perfect Dark, or the heroine of per- Perfect Dark. Um, except the game's pretty much shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a very easy it's, way to put it. It 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 kind of went through all of the the whole checklist of cliche first person shooter, like everything. <laughs> So you, you had all the, the enemies, or the basic kind of dumb enemies, cover-based shooting at times. Um, yeah, it, it tried a lot. They tried, it, they tried to do a lot of things, and none of them really worked. Not at all. Yeah, I mean, the I mean, per- it, yeah. They, well, they, they, they brought back a lot of the, the classic weapons and the classic abilities with the weapons, which was nice. But there really wasn't... There really wasn't too much in that game that could have been considered good. Right. It was definitely trying too hard to be something that had already passed. Right. I mean, the game, the game it did look pretty good considering you know right you know at that point we were shifting from like PS2 you know to Xbox 360, and it was one of the only games that was on Xbox very short lived Xbox Silver, where you could play online for free. That's right. It was. I completely forgot about that. So. Yeah. I mean that was that was that was the only nice thing about it. Now that I think about it, is yeah. that you didn't have to have Xbox Gold. Yes, to, but ooh. the multiplayer was completely broken. It, it was, was. It was completely broken. I think there was like there was something where you could just like roll around everywhere and dodge everyone's fire, so everyone's just like rolling and like rolling. Like, <laughs> it was so bad. It was awful. Fortunately, we don't ever have to see that game ever again because Rare has pretty much died. <laughs> It's true. Well, they well yeah. No, no they're yeah. still they're still kicking. But I mean, what what was the last rare game you remember coming out? You know, I I remember a rare game coming out because that will uh, lead into the game I want to talk about. Another rare <laughs> game for the Xbox 360. Another rare game that was uh, you know pretty good on the uh, Nintendo 64, and that of course would be Banjo Kazooie: Nuts and Bolts. How do you take a great franchise like Banjo Kazooie, which you know, you, again, used kind of like the Donkey Kong engine, Donkey Kong on the Nintendo 64. And here's a great idea: rather than making an action platformer, which seemed to do very well, let's just turn it into like vehicular Lego building, and that's <laughs> the entire game. 
uh, makes sense. I mean, that's completely a part of Banjo Kazooie, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. I the, mean, that's the, the that's Lego what... vehicles. Oh, work yeah, in all the games. Yeah, the gummy ship. You know, the gummy ship of uh, vehicle buildings. That's really what I remember when I remember playing. You know, Banjo Banjo Kazooie on Nintendo sixty four. I mean, it's just like it would have been better. I mean, they did. You know, they have they, they did do like a re, a re release of um, Banjo Kazooie, like a slightly upscaled version. From the Nintendo 64. But, you know, when they redid Conker's Bad Fur Day and they kind of changed it and actually the 64 version is better. Like, I almost would have rather them have, them have just done that. Just, like, re- completely just redo the original Banjo-Kazooie. That would have been way better than Nuts and Bolts. Because Nuts and Bolts, not only was it not what people wanted, so it was obviously, you know, disappointing. I think just when they announced the game, people were already disappointed. But let alone that the game itself wasn't even good. It had like graphical issues and like the collision mapping. What like what didn't work very well? That's how you had to like complete your objectives, and it was just a bad game all around. Yeah, and then honestly, it felt like it felt like they were making a game that was supposed to be unique, and then they felt they wouldn't be able to succeed without a big title behind it. And right. That's why they made it Banjo Kazooie because it really just didn't make any sense. Yeah. For the style of game, like yeah. I mean, yeah, it was probably like they were working on a game, and then at the last minute, they're like, yeah, we should probably throw like Banjo Kazooie on this. Like, yeah, yeah. So disappointing. All right, uh, Alan. I'll I haven't played either of those games. Oh well, you don't really need to. So <laughs> you haven't missed much. Yeah, exactly. So the first one I'm going to do is an exclusive, but just to sort of preface, I had an Xbox 360 slightly after launch till really late in the life cycle i red ringed and then got a ps3 and as we've sort of discussed the this the, the last part of the life cycle of that generation the ps3 was way better if oh, you had oh, absolutely. an xbox 360 oh, yeah. start you were doing it right and exactly. then if you ended that's with a PS3, yeah that's that's what i did is i had a 360 for almost the entire generation until very late Still so this this was one of those games that was so i was like so excited because it was like one of those first you know the Wii came out with its motion controls, and then this one had voice control, like it had uh, all sorts of cool stuff. And it's Tom Clancy's End War, so it wasn't an exclusive, but at that time I only had an Xbox 360, and I was so excited for this game. Yeah. And it just it didn't work yet. That they tried for what they were trying for way too soon for what they could actually do. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the Tom Clancy games in general have just been all over the place. Just like, oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you have everything from from tactical shooters to strategy games to, I want to say that they had, somebody's even made a text adventure. The, well, they had the uh, like the Hawks games, you know. What I the mean? Hawks games, that's yeah. right. The flight sim games. Right. It's like it's really like, good. It's like they dip their hands in all these different things, just like with End War, and you know, it's, they it, they need they need to just like fully commit to I think to really make a good game. Did, okay. You guys have played both played End War, right? Yeah, I played it yeah. I, just a little bit. I haven't. Okay. I don't have as much okay. experience with it as you guys do. So, we all have tried using the voice controls, right? Gotten them to work a little bit. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. A little I'm, bit. I'm not saying yeah. like they worked. Yeah. Right. I'm saying they worked occasionally. Right. Yeah, I think I put probably like twenty to thirty hours in the game, and at, I was just like oh. at that point, it it felt like it. Sh- I should have been like you know, I should have been fluent with it by then, and right. I still really couldn't get it to do what I wanted to do. Right. Yeah. I mean, I I do like that system of uh of strategy game. It it feels it feels similar to a game called Z Steel Soldiers in that you have a bunch of nodes on the map that you have to take. Yeah. But uh that's where the similarities end. Um <laughs> well, and yeah. then the game just kind of sucks. Yeah. I I feel I mean, I feel like voice control like, you know, even now like voice control games still aren't very good. Like, I mean, I I, don't, I can't even remember any voice control game that has ever been good. Like, I mean, I'm even thinking all the way back to, like, Hey, you Pikachu. Like, the voice well, control. Yeah, full voice. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just, like. Are you, are you yeah. saying Seaman was a bad game? <laughs> okay, Seaman is a great game only because, <laughs> only because it, uh, you know, featured Lemon Nimroy. You know, may he rest like, in peace. But, I mean, you know, it's like, I mean, that's pretty much it, you know. There's yeah. been some games that have integrated it pretty heavily. Like, Socom did a right. really good integrate yeah. it but yeah there's never been a game that i know of that's full voice that's been right fun to play right no not 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 that i can remember 
So I have a copy of a game called Lifeline lying around that I have never been able to get it to work because none of the microphones I've ever used are compatible. For whatever reason, it likes a very specific brand right. of USB headset right. that I have not been able to find. Oh, okay. And supposedly it has somewhat decent voice control. It's a PS2 game, so don't expect a lot. But it has a really interesting uh, way. Essentially, you're not you're playing a guy looking through cameras, mm -hmm. commanding somebody to shoot at things. Uh, when it works, apparently it works well. When it doesn't work, which is most of the time, <laughs> it's a piece of shit. But yeah, I mean that voice control has been all over the place, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well. You know what, Thomas? When I think of voice control and I think of odd control types, I think about the game that you want to talk about next. Oh, God. <laughs> so, a game came out for the original Xbox that was, in a way, phenomenal. That game is called Steel Battalion. It has a giant controller that consists of two joysticks, like five switches, 36 buttons, and three pedals, and one dial. Like, the, it's not a fucking joke of a game it's not uh, and it was a lot of fun to play yeah it's an well odd, it's a it's an odd it's a really odd game but it's really it's it's good it's, it's, it's the, experience, the experience the experience is really good the game itself is is it, you know, average yeah yeah it's, oh it's yeah not so bad. the original oh, yeah it's, it's not, not a joke to play Indeed. yeah the original now they decided to make a second one on the 360 however the big thing at this point was motion controls and motion controls on the 360 meant one thing Connect. Oh, God. Now, Connect has only been good for one thing. And what that one thing is doesn't involve the Xbox at all. <laughs> it's true. It's really good for, for all the weird little projects you see floating around on PC. Yeah. No Connect game has been decent, with the exception of maybe Let's Dance. But that's a game where yeah. you have to get up dance in front of your TV. That's so true. the Connect Sports was like okay. I will say that the Xbox, eh. the Xbox One's Connect is much better, although it's still terrible. But it's, it's yeah, you know, still that's, that's saying a bit. Anyway, so back back so to the So they decided to. So Capcom decided to re Steel Battalion Heavy Armor. Now, it was supposed to be a game where you take the role of. Somebody, a uh, 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 command, uh, commander or gunner or something, I don't remember what the actual role was, inside this essentially a walking tank. And it was a different world than the original Steel Battalion. Kind of different low but high tech kind of feel to it. So you had like World War II walking tanks. <laughs> so you didn't have any high tech stuff. You had gauges and dials and right. things like that. But the game had a really interesting concept. So, like, you you were in this. You had to like gauge the morale of the other members of your team inside the tank because you had a gunner and a, a captain and a spotter and a, and you know the the guy who actually drives the fucking thing. And it had all sorts of, like really cool events. As you're fighting, you can have people like get up and, and throw grenades into your tank, which you had to then get rid of. You had like breaches that you had to to like do field repairs on or you know treat traumatic injuries to your your you know your allies inside the tank and this would have been a lot cooler if they hadn't gone primarily connect yeah which was awful and unresponsive and it didn't just work did, it was bad was absolute shit yeah it was yeah. absolutely awful and later they added some controller controls which didn't help at all like it was it just ended up being a bad game yeah, I remember reading reviews for that game and then being like, I remember seeing like twos, like it, it, like it was really low, like really well low. received. Like, and it, it doesn't really help that you're coming off of one of the most unique experiences, right? Pretty much in gaming, which yeah. was that giant controller and and the right. feeling of walking around in a really awkward, super stompy death mac. right? Well, you know, I, yeah, well, you know, I mean, whatever the yeah. fuck, Steel Battalion Heavy Armor was, right? Well, I think the interesting thing is like. I think they went with the Connect because, you know, rather than just giving it a controller, they're like, okay, well, we have the Connect, but maybe they did it because they're like, well, people just wouldn't buy a two hundred dollar controller, right? Because I mean, I remember the original controller was really expensive, and even and buying it on buying it today is also really expensive. Uh, um, at this point, it's a collector's edition. Although I yeah. have two of them, which True. makes me proud. You have both versions. I have both versions. Yeah, I love Steel Battalion. Nobody it's, can ever oh, say so that good. I don't. But. In the end, it's like if you like, there were probably some people who bought a Connect for this game. So these people still went out and spent the two hundred dollars to you know to buy the Connect in the game. 
I almost was one of them, but yeah. the 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 idea of the Connect was off putting. Right. Like even before then the Connect had, had not had the greatest uh reputation. Right. And when they first announced heavy armor, I was super excited right up until they said connect. Yeah. I just all of it uh. disappeared. I was just like, well, I don't really think this is going to do well. And surprise, it did. Yeah. What well, the next game that I want to talk about uh in some ways relates to the connect, and that would be Fable 3. You know they released a Fable game, Fable Legends or something like that that was for the connect. And mm-hmm. I'm a diehard Fable fan, but I didn't even get it because Fable 3 was so disappointing that I was like, and this is a Kinect game that it's probably going to suck anyway. But I think it did end up sucking. So, um, you know, it's a good thing. Well, Fable 3, I don't think I don't think it's too difficult to say that the Fable games, while they've been good, have always been somewhat, you know, disappointing. I think mostly because Peter Molyneux, you know, the series developer, has always promised so much about the games. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's always done that with a lot of his games. But Fable 3, so Fable 1, you know, at the end of the day, it was what it was, and it was a really good game. I think, you know, it, it, did, it did really well. I really I mean, enjoyed it. It didn't have the whole, like, plant a seed, grow a tree thing. Exactly. But you know what? Yeah. It didn't need it. It was fun. Yeah, Fable 2, um, I didn't like the magic system, but I felt like Fable 2 was a better game. Like, the world, you know, had more choices and everything, and, you know, a lot of things worked really well for it. And then Fable 3 came out, and it's like they took a huge step back. Like, Fable 3, like, the world was much less open. It was, like, much more – the game was super linear. And then when you get to the end and you actually get to be the king and you get to make the decisions, that's, like, the best part of the game. But you get to make, like, five decisions. It's like, oh. I don't know. Before we get too far away from it, Fable the Journey was the connect. Fable, Fable the Journey. Legends is the upcoming. Yeah, Fable Legends is the upcoming. Yeah, this, five yeah, player yeah. Uh, with one person playing the dungeon master essentially. Yeah, yeah well, like, I'm it, actually I'm actually looking forward to that. I one. am too. Actually, yeah. it's kind of like it'll be like evolve, and I don't think that I you know I'm I'm curious to see how it goes. Like that one could be good, although Fable. So <laughs> yeah, and keep, well, Peter, keep, well, Peter Molyneux is not involved. So yes, which yeah. is true. <laughs> There will be no decisions were promised and yet can't make, I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah, Fable 3, it was just like, you know, you once you get, when, then you get to the point where it's like, oh man, you the game actually starts to get good and you, it's like five decisions and it's just, and then afterwards it's like, well, that was disappointing. Like, so it's like, you're just disappointed the entire, the entire time throughout, you're just disappointed. <laughs> so. Now... Was Fable the first one that was, or Fable three the one that that was they were really talking up the dog? Uh, no, Fable two was, was the when, Fable two is when oh. you got the dog. Yeah. Okay. You do have a dog. Trying to, I was you, trying yeah. to remember which which yeah. one it was that was like originally talking up the dog super hard. Yeah. Do you have a dog in Fable three? I think you do. I, I think you do because remember. yeah yeah you do because it You're takes right. the it takes the bullet for you. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Which is like. Yeah. We're gonna uh, we're gonna attach the emotions to this dog, um, our emotions to this dog, whether you like it or not. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. Although I will say some of the choices in Fable Three, I felt like were better than the other games because, like in Fable Two, in Fable One, it's like you have like two big decisions. In Fable Two, you have like minor decisions that you can make if you like on like a lot of side missions that will like affect the world, which is kind of cool. But Fable Three, it's like you are fa- you're constantly faced with like decisions but then you know the only ones that really matter is when you get to become king and you get to make like four yeah, so but fable one had the better villain jack of blades was awesome. oh yeah yeah fable one <laughs> fable one's a, yeah, a great game yeah fable three is and it's it no. may be worth playing once maybe <laughs> so all right and uh let's just go I'll ahead get the master chief armor yeah oh that's right yeah <laughs> yeah so all right let's just let's go ahead and toss it over to alan so, so, uh, so we can continue the disappointment that's... Very highly overpromised and very, very <laughs> underdelivered was a envelops the player in a real time world where individual decisions can unveil numerous discoveries and affect other encounters. Call game called Infinite Undiscovery. Oh God, it's so bad! Oh, it's so bad! <laughs> oh my God! Uh, yeah. So no, none of that actually <laughs> happened in the game. 
it didn't, <laughs> it didn't have the worst story ever. I, I played through a good most of it. Uh, and then no, you know, it was fine. Whatever. It was like a JRPG. But how do you how do you sell how do you sell a game that says it that that's what it is and it ends up not being that so hard, right? <laughs> it's just another JRPG. And I mean, granted, you know, X we've talked about Xbox 360 doesn't really have many of those. Yeah, it doesn't so really have many. So you kind of take what you can get on that right. system because of how terrible it, it was, but. I mean, you, and this was kind of one of those ones where you see a, a wide range of ratings. Like, you can see some places have given it really high ratings. Like, it's right. got an 8 on Game Informer, 7.1 on, on IGN, IGN, yeah, 8 on OXM. Yeah. Game well, it did, yeah. It. Well, it did, <sighs> just like another actual Square Enix game that was also disappointing on the 360, um, that'd be Last Remnant, It uh, both of those games kind of suffer from graphical issues unless you install it on the 360 hard drive it does they don't run well like they don't they kind of like hic- hiccup and especially last remnant like last remnant really has some problems unless you install it yeah square enix this was... square enix did not have a good they did really did not have a good showing on the uh, in terms of rpgs on the uh, xbox 360 nope who really did i mean um, um was actually lost, lost odyssey th- yeah that would be all <laughs> of the x square enix developers who created lost yep. yeah Mr. walker <laughs> studio and created lost odyssey actually even um i don't th- they didn't do did mist walker do blue dragon yeah i was gonna say blue dragon yeah. as well because that's but nobu but like nobu metsu did weird. the music for it yeah so I didn't, it, it I didn't looks know like it's it's square because they do dragon warriors as well don't they yeah dragon quest dragon wars yeah dragon quest yeah whatever yeah yeah and then, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and then, of course, they made, you know, the game that we've bashed probably more than any other game ever, Final Fantasy XIII, which, oh. again, was, even though the game wasn't that great, it was better on the PS3. Um, yep. Because of uh, the Blu-ray. Uh, do, you, do you remember when they announced that that game was going to be on both consoles? Do you oh, remember yeah. the hate that generated? Oh, yeah. That was people, amazing. People, yeah, people were freaking out. Like, oh, yeah. People started raging so hard. Oh, oh it was so funny. Yeah, like, Blue was Dragon it? was developed by Microsoft. Interesting. Oh, wow. yep. They must have stole a bunch of those people for their project. Yeah, because I don't think they, I don't think they developed uh, Mist Walker Studios yet. But uh, yeah, well, uh, those are some disappointing games on the Xbox 360. We hope we've disappointed you. Is actually uh, <laughs> that was actually our goal for this episode. Yes, it's true. It's the one thing I wanted to go over because we get we get quite a few comments on these videos and it's really fun to go back and forth with oh, you yeah, guys. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so you can see Thomas in there. Uh, no, you can't. Never mind. Thomas doesn't ever comment on anything. I don't That's ever true. comment. You, can, you can see Matt in there under his yes. Super Games Bros. Yes. Yeah, so and sometimes also- I comment as Super Games Bros, and other times I try to make comments for the three of us as Box Trick. Is yeah. Usually, is usually and, how and it works. I'm in there a lot as well as Talon eighty eight. I've got the picture of the cat. So, yeah. yo. We we will respond to most anything that's in there. Yeah, Matt will, yeah. and I'll get in there if there's something you know I talked about or I had thoughts on when we talked about it. So yeah, yeah leave us comments definitely, guys. Yeah, we absolutely. Love yeah, leave us. Yeah, we 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 read. I I definitely read all the comments, and uh, then I usually um you know I usually will tell the comments to you guys so you guys can keep up with what's going on. <laughs> yeah, we we look at our what's the Google the Google Nomics. We look at our Google mm-hmm. Nomics all the time. All the time, yeah. To Absolutely. figure out, you know, how many views we're getting and adding subscribers, that stuff's really cool. So leave us comments, and we can we'll talk with you. We'd love to talk with you guys. Give yeah. us something you'd like us to do. I have a um, a pickups. So I've got like twenty games I bought in the last two months, and I just I need the gear to to God to make it. So it's coming. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot more coming. Absolutely, and uh, we're oh, always yeah. yep. always. Yep. So, well, as always, guys, thanks for listening. To to, to make it. So it's coming.